hope the fasts are treating you well. This is, of course, brought to you in association with um, the British Muslim TV and Shazans. So, as always, joining me in the studio, I have our guest chef, which is Denise, today. So, Denise, what are we doing? What are we doing today? Oh, Hi. We're this looks amazing. Red Thai lamb burgers. Red Thai lamb burgers. Yeah. Ooh. So, so we're I've really going with the red today, aren't we? Yeah, well, we're going all for it. So, I've got them on, so hopefully you'll be able to taste them later Brilliant. On. Brilliant. So we'll come back to you to find okay. out more about what you put in the recipe. But in the meantime, guys, I'd like to ask you to come and join me in the cosy corner where we have our guests today. Welcome, James Taylor. How are you? Very well, thank you. Assalamu alaikum, Ramadan Mubarak. Walaikum salam, and thank you very much. That's wonderful. So, James, you're from the Broughton Grounds Farm. Yes, that's right. Um, a farm with my father, Andrew, who's a tenant on the Broughton Castle Estate wow. near, near Banbury. Uh -huh. uh, we're traditional mixed farmers, um, which means we have livestock and we grow crops. And I'm looking forward to explaining to you today some of the things we do, what we do with visitors, and what sustainability looks like on the farm and how we look after the environment. So today we're going to be talking about sustainability, sustainability on the farm. And um, James is joining me today to talk to us about some of his experiences and some of the work that they do and, and some of the wonderful things. So you produce primarily lambing, is it sheep farming? Yes, yes, we're just between lambing flocks now. We lamb some, um, some sheep in January when uh, we're going to see a film in a moment of some lambs being born from late January. It was a particularly wet night when your <laughs> colleagues came out. Um, and then we're just about to start our main flock, which is uh, late March, goes through to mid-April. Uh, when we have lots of school visits during that time and a, and a oh. small lambing open day. Uh, we also keep cattle um, and we um, mm -hmm. grow wheat and barley. We have chickens to produce eggs and then we've got a, a couple of million bees producing honey and, and wax. Well, which, which we've got here, yeah, I believe. Yeah, wow. I'll explain a bit to you about that. Um, but yeah, we, my father um, is a tenant on the farm. My, my grandfather moved to the farm in 1914. Um, 1914? 1914, so, yeah. Wow, you, you've been there a while. But yeah, just a while. <laughs> and actually, my earliest memory is of my late grandfather milking a cow on this stool, which Amazing. we think is about at least 80 years old. Wow. Um, and yeah, I remember opening the door and him squirting milk in my face. I was only a very small child. But oh. this stool's got three legs, and that's a good way for us to look at sustainability and what it means in practice. Sustainable, mm -hmm. a farm, sustainable um, sheep farming. Sure. And if one, one leg represents um, the environment and maintaining and enhancing habitats, mm -hmm. um, being as responsible as we can uh, on, on, on the farm, and as I say, a whole mosaic of habitats, looking after the soil. I've brought some soil from the farm here, and a bit later we'll discuss what good soil looks like because it's the most important asset on the farm. We've got um, some species-rich meadows with about 130, 135 mm -hmm. species of flowers on. So the environment's really important. Hmm. And then there's the social aspect. So it's important, I think, to look after people, to engage the community, to explain hmm. to people the story yeah. of where food comes from. Hmm. We enjoy doing school visits, and we have other, other visitors um, come every week to the farm. And then financial. Um, so obviously it's important to make, make a profit. Um, prices are very volatile. As, as a farmer, the weather and prices are largely outside your control. So the advantage of a mixed system with mm -hmm. livestock mm -hmm. integrated is that you spread your risk sure. and that when, uh, at the moment, for example, the wheat and barley price is really low, but the land price is really good. Mm. So it means that you're quite resilient because in, a, in any one year, you're hopefully always going to make a profit. So join so, today, we're going to look at some, some different activities we do as we go through the programme. So you gave us the privilege of coming and actually seeing your farm in action. Yeah. So we've got a short video now, so let's okay. take a look at that. Great. If we're here, we see they've had one. We'll give them a hand to, to land the second one. So I'm just going to walk up to this sheet. Practice, you have to practice your rugby skills. Give it a quick, uh, quick grab and then gently just twist the neck and then she'll, she'll go over like that. And then I'll just see, check the other lambs coming. It's coming forwards, what I call the Superman position with the head and um, two legs like that, which is how you want. Sometimes they come with one leg backwards and that's fine. It's when they're um, when they're actually coming backwards with the tail first, that you can have trouble when they're breached. But this one's fine, so I'm just going to pull it out like that. Clear its airways, and she'll come round and lick it clean. There we go. That's absolutely fine. In a minute, I'll spray the neighbour with ivy so they stay nice and hygienic, and they don't get any bugs. 
And within a few minutes, there'll be, uh, this one was only born 10 minutes ago, she's cleaned it already. It's really satisfying, we try to look after the sheep as best we can, give the lambs the best possible life they can, they can have. Um, the way that we farm here, we, we farm in a very integrated way with, with the livestock, with the cattle and the sheep and the, the wheat and the barley that we grow and the manure from the animals helps grow, grow the crops and then the, the straw and the hay, straw from the wheat and then the, the dried grass, this is actually haylage which is like pickled grass which they're eating at the moment. Uh, so it's a very sort of integrated system. Um, yeah, I mean, we do enjoy it. We've, it's a traditional system and we've farmed this way for quite a long time. It's good for the soil. We have very high soil organic matter and we have a real sort of uh, mosaic of habitats as well and we're in an environmental scheme with the government which uh, helps us to, to maintain those habitats. But on a very wet and windy night in February, you'll just have to take my word for it because we can't see much outside. A bit of TLC. We have numbers with each field that we've, we've turned away so we know how many ewes and how many lambs are in each field. So when we go and do the shepherding in the morning, we do a quick counter. Um, we've got different colour sprays that we use depending if they've a single, a twin or a triplet. As I say, we usually, well always now actually, adopt a, a spare triplet lambs over onto the singles. There's the iodine spray. Sometimes they get a little bit short of energy um, just before they lamb, especially if they've got multiple lambs. So we have some um, high energy solution here in case they, they, they are struggling a little bit. Um, and this is lube, just occasionally you have a very um, very big lamb which can, can be a little bit tricky to get out or you can sometimes have two lambs coming together. Um, and this is gloves, obviously hygiene um, is important so we use a fresh glove each time. So this one that was born a few minutes ago, there's its, um, its label there, and I'm just spraying it with iodine to stop any infections coming through, to keep it nice and, nice and hygienic, and then in a moment we'll put it in a pen so that the ewe can bond with the own lambs. If we just left them like this, um, the other morning I, I, I came out and I fell asleep on the sofa for an hour and, and there were seven lambs in a heap and then it takes a long time to work out because who's is who's because the ewes uh, start licking the wrong lamb and then they get confused and then they won't accept their own lamb back because it smells of another ewe so you, it does pay to, to try and be on the ball and uh, solve those problems before they uh, escalate. Right, we'll leave her. Most, most of the ewes will have two, we'd love all of them to have two and the ewes have plenty of milk and in both teats. Um, sometimes you get a triplet and then we'll adopt that lamb over to one that's only had one or we'll, we'll make it a pet, we'll bottle feed them. I enjoy doing school visits so it's nice to have a few pet lambs but um, the kids are here to do it once and you've got to do it four times a day for a couple of months so the novelty soon wears off. So we try and adopt as many as we can um, over to, to, to use that have just had the one lamb. Okay, so I've got three uh, pet lambs here. This one uh, was a triplet, and the mum has only uh, got enough milk for two. So towards it suck the bottle. Sometimes it takes a day or two. You put the teeth in the mouth and think, oh, this doesn't smell of mum. And they're not interested, but um, it takes a bit of perseverance. It's very good when we have um, schools visit, but uh, you don't want too many because it's all the time. You've got to feed them when you haven't got children to help. So we feed these about four times a day, it's important not to overfeed them because they can gorge and then get a bit bloated. Just give them little feeds. And then when we put them in the, uh, in the field, for all of summer they'll be chasing us around thinking we've got milk. So that gets a bit annoying. You go out to check the sheep and you're falling over lambs. There we go. Just give them a little feed. Come on, Bob. Okay. So this one was actually, um, both of these two were twins and the, the mum didn't have enough milk for um, to have two. So it's rather than uh, have two lambs that are sort of fighting to get enough milk, they just, just took one off and turned her out with one. Especially at this time of year, you know, we can still have some pretty tough weather in uh, February and March. 
better to play it safe and know that the lambs that the mum does go out with are going to be are going to do well. Okay. Great. So these lambs were all born uh, this morning and this afternoon. So what we do, we put them into these individual pens for up to 48 hours, just to make sure they use producing fancy milk. The, the lambs are nice and strong. Um, with to with it's, it's pouring down with rain at the moment, so they might have to stay in a little bit longer. And then they go into a pen, either inside or outside, with, with other user lambs for another day, and then they'll go, go into the field. But we want to make sure they're, they're just right. So what we do, as well as providing them hay and water and, and straw for bedding, is we just pick them up and just check they've got a full tummy. So that one has set. That was the idea. It's not actually as full as it could be, so I need to keep a little eye on that one. I'll just check it for me. Yeah, that one's uh, that one sucks a bit uh, better. That's got quite a full tummy, but not absolutely, not absolutely chocker. So I need to keep an eye on that. Um, let's go on to the next one. Okay. That's better. Look at that. Full tummy of milk. Nice, strong, healthy lamb. We we've got some of the highest production standards in the world, we really have. We, um, we have inspections, um, we have to keep records, um, we um, have regular conversations with our vets, we're part of a flock health club, a group, which, which is above and beyond what we have to do, but that's because we really want to, want to get it just right. And we want to you know, make sure that we can really look after these animals to the absolute best of our ability. And I say that the, the, it's very much a sort of overall system. So all the environmental stuff that we do on the farm and the species rich hay meadows and the hedgerows, um, that's all there because we keep animals. The soil structure, we don't have to use too much artificial fertilizer because of all the manures that's coming back from the, from the livestock. Um, I read the other day that uh, the hedgerows in, in, the, in the UK could go around the world ten times, and that is a full of like birds and different biodiversity, and that's all there because we have we have animals. So um, yeah, sometimes that message can get lost a little bit. Pretty pretty confident we have have uh, a, a pretty content sheep. Sheep will, at the best of times, sheep will drive you mad. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, you get used to it. And as you see, they're they're sucking there. It's very satisfying when you come in and you see newborn lambs sucking, getting a belly full of milk, because you know that that's, you know, you're sort of 90% of the Is way, it? of the way there. You know that she's bonded with the lambs, the lambs have learned how to suck, and um, they're, you know, they've got a, a full tummy and they're well on the way to, to uh, have a healthy life. Welcome back then after that lovely video that we saw. So we actually got to experience a live um, lambing session going on on um, Broughton, Brown's farm. Yeah. <laughs> so, is that how? So we're obviously we're in are we we're in lambing season now, aren't we? Yeah, we start again. Um, the gestation of a sheep is 144 days, and uh, so we start again on Sunday, Monday, um, and we've got 300 and uh, about 320 in the next flock to uh, to lamb, which will wow. keep me busy. My my father um, is the main man on the farm, along with um, <laughs> a lad who works there, Josh, who's 17. Is is just out of uh, school at mm -hmm. uh, did a year at college college and then uh, and then myself we've got a vet student helping us as well okay so that's quite a small team for yeah, such yeah, a large number um, one of the advantages of mixed farming where mm. we keep animals and we grow crops mm -hmm. is that it does give give people young people an opportunity to learn the ropes our mm. tractors aren't huge whereas mm. big arable farms that just grow wheat and and barley and mm. a few other crops tend to have much bigger machinery so mm. we can give mm -hmm. young lads an opportunity to sort of learn the ropes Yes. and to come and help at weekends and things like that. Um, mm. But one thing I wanted to talk about yeah, is okay. soil. Okay, yes, we were going to come back to yeah, that yeah, word. Yeah. The, the most important asset on any farm is, is the soil and the way you look after it. Mm. It's amazing to think really that we're reliant as a species, we're reliant on those top mm. few inches of, uh, of topsoil. So it's really important as farmers mm. we look after it. And this is uh, just something I dug up this morning. Uh, which shows clover, which is I a love legume. That. This, this yeah. is a bit of a. Oh, here was one I prepared earlier. Yeah, here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> so if we break this up, we're going to hopefully. Oh dear, I'm getting uh, soil all over your carpet. But there's earthworms. There's lots of goodness in here. There's lots mm. of real structure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And 
we have what we call organic matter, which is all the sort of living stuff in there. We, we have about 10 to 13 percent in our soil. If we just grew uh, crops, we just grew plants, mm -hmm. we just mm -hmm. had mm -hmm. um, wheat and barley, um, we would probably have three or four percent. So it, it really adds some keeping livestock really adds body to the soil. Sure. It also means that we don't have to buy in so much fertilizer because mm -hmm. this clover, it takes nitrogen from the air. The air is like 78% mm -hmm. nitrogen, mm. and it pulls it into the ground. It's like a free fertilizer. Amazing. So we will grow this for a couple of years. The sheep will graze it. We'll make some hay, and then um, on the third year, it will go back into growing wheat. Um, so it's, it's our rotation. We have sure. this, and it's really, really testament to my father that he's farmed like this for um, 50, 55 years. So you'd agree then that having good soil means yeah. you are growing really good sheep. Yeah, it, it certainly helps. And lambs. Yeah, it certainly yeah. helps because it's very high protein, this, this, um, mm. this uh, mm. clover. So at the moment, the lambs that were born in January and early February mm -hmm. are, um, mm -hmm. are eating this. Um, and the ones that are going to be born um, in late March, early April will, mm. will go on similar fields, but a bit mm -hmm. further away from the farm. So it's a real sort of mm -hmm. mosaic of habitats because we have this rotation where we have grass alongside crops, mm -hmm. alongside permanent grass and different things we're doing for the environment. It's not sure. like a monoculture, but we have lots of different things going on. So which... there, are, there are lots of advantages. I mean, obviously, like you've just mentioned, the reduction in what you need to do in terms of fertiliser, yeah. then having, you know, that, that, that graze for your, for your, for your sheep, yeah. for your herds. Yeah, absolutely. So there it, is it a means, lot. And, so, yeah. and how does that impact the growing of, of other, you know, Yeah, it, it means when, when we grow wheat, we only mm. use about... Um, maybe about half of the bought-in fertilizer because we've got, um, we've got a lot of the fertility already in the land. And if you buy in um, artificial fertilizer, it takes a lot of energy to make. Sure. So the more nutrients we can keep in the system, we try and look upon the farm as sort of okay. an integrated system. That's really interesting. We're going to talk more about that yeah. after the Azan break. Thank you. Welcome back then after that Azan break. Um, we've been talking to James all about the, um, the Broughton Grounds Farm. And um, James, we were, we were just having a really lovely chat about some of the things that you were telling us about the farm. We've actually got some images of the farm now. Sure. So maybe you'd like to talk us through. So this is an aerial view. Yes, this was, uh, there's a coach in the background. This is during a school visit during lambing time uh -huh. when all the fields just started to get nice and green. This is my father, Andrew, showing some children, mm -hmm. um, ear tagging some sheep there. We try and get people as involved as possible, like quite immersive sure. visits when we do school visits. There's, um, yeah, uh, one of my hives. There's about 50,000 bees in a wow. colony. <laughs> uh, one queen, a few hundred workers, uh, a few hundred drones, and the rest are workers, the females that are doing all the work. Mm -hmm. That's one of the pollen and nectar plots that we have on the farm to encourage um, bees and, and uh, butterflies. Mm -hmm. We've got... Oh, and this is um, a species-rich hay meadow, which has 135 species. I try and learn one flower's name a year. <laughs> I've got a long way to go. But, um, yeah, no, that, that's... And, and that's all because we're quite low input. We don't use much fertiliser. And the sheep, the way the sheep graze, mm -hmm. it encourages those, those flowers to spread around. No, it looked amazing. And I mean, you wouldn't actually necessarily know that there, is, there are so many different aspects to what happens, uh, you know, on a farm uh, like yours. It's, there's so much going on, like, especially because we've got lots of different enterprises. Of course. Every day there's always a weather-dependent task that um, you kind of need to crack on with and trying to juggle things. Um, and as I say, this is the way my father, his sort of real belief that we're stewards of the countryside. Yeah. And I think a lot of farmers are like that because you have to mm, really care mm. about what you're doing. Of course. Because if, you know, we've got some of the, the mm. highest welfare standards in the world with really high production standards. And if, if you're not really like, passionate about it, then you won't be farming for very long. Um, and the other thing is the interconnectivity of all the different aspects of the farm. Absolutely. You know, when you see it talked to in images in the way that you just described to us you can actually see how everything connects yeah and you wouldn't uh, you wouldn't ordinarily think that absolutely or, it's yeah. a real mosaic and it's by keeping the livestock is how we end up with that sort of patchwork mm, of mm. countryside that that everyone loves really yeah. um it's only maintained by well in, in many parts of the country by grazing sheep but i just wanted to do a little demonstration yes, yeah. just to illustrate how important soil is so if this apple was to represent uh, well, the earth so yeah. you're going to do a little demo. I'm going to have a date because the, the, um, the fast has just opened. Excellent. Right. Well, I'll just show. So if this was the, if this was the earth, just to demonstrate how important oh, okay. topsoil is, and about three quarters is ocean. So we mm -hmm. only end up with about, hold it, about a quarter. 
And then by the time we've taken off mountains and ice caps and cities and deserts, we end up with about a 30th of the Earth, which, not to scale, but just as a demo, let's say would be actually smaller than that bit. But, and then the topsoil is just the top sort of 10 to 30 centimetres. Mm -hmm. So it's just, I try and do this sometimes when we have school visits, just to demonstrate to children the importance of looking after the soil and being responsible as a farmer, because unless we just want to eat fish and seaweed, <laughs> our existence is, re existence is reliant upon that tiny little bit Believe there. me, there was a time in the day, during my fasting day, where if you'd said fish and seaweed, I would have taken it. Yeah, 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 yeah I'm sure. I'm sure I love fish and seaweed, but not pr perhaps <laughs> every not. day. But no, I think you make a really remarkable point about how, you know, you can kind of like embody all of that yeah. in how you've, you've just shown us with the, with the apple. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I'd also just like to, to show you some of the activities. As I mm. said to one of, um, one of the photos when my dad was showing yeah. some, some, mm. some children, the sheep, we try and um, involve people in tasks. I find a good school visit, you want six or seven activities. Yeah. Um, one of the things we do, we've got a little hand mill here. Okay. So we, we ask children what they have for breakfast, mm. and then we just make the link back to whatever cereal or bread they've had, and we put it, put it in the mill and get them just mm -hmm. to make flour. Then on occasions right. we'll yeah. cook pancakes and have a bit of a... Oh, it's a bit stiff. You don't get much for 20 quid off eBay, but <laughs> grrr, there we go. So you can see all the, the flour yeah. coming down there. And again, it's like connectivity, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, something I, did I hope she... Denise isn't going to make us do that, you know, for our, for our buns, for the lovely food that she's doing. <laughs> um, I've got some of, um, some of our honey here. And in and... fact, she's using some of your honey in her recipe oh, excellent. today. Oh, excellent. I look forward to tasting that. Um, I... Yeah. Why don't, we, why don't we go over and speak to Denise and oh, cool. bring your... Why don't you bring that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We... Sure. I was just going to bring some, some yeah. wax because that's something else that bees give us. This is dyed wax yeah. and can make candles with that. Oh, Denise, what <laughs> treats are you going to have for oh, us I'm today? doing Thailand burgers. James, um, please take a seat. Oh, thank you. And wow. uh, I've got some on the go already. They've cooked, but I'm just going to show you how yeah. to prepare them. I'll just move this one up a little bit. Thank you. And you've got my wow. on. And I've used um, some of James's honey in uh, uh, the salad. I've drizzled some over, so... This Wonderful. is really quick. It's uh, red Thai lamb burgers with uh, lamb mints. You had me a red. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the meat is red. <clears throat> yes, I've got some about 450 grams or about a pound of uh, lamb mints. Right. And to that, I'm going to add two teaspoons of um, prepared Thai, red Thai paste. Mm. Just two teaspoons of that. And then I'm also going to add a teaspoon of fish sauce. See, we've gone back to fish now. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And Sorry. about a tablespoon of freshly chopped coriander. Mm. Mint's also very good. You can add mint mm. as well. So you'd add the mint sauce to the mixture? Just fresh mint. Yeah. Oh, chopped. fresh mint. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I've got the zest and the juice of one lime. And I'm just going to season with some pepper and some salt. I've got my gloves on because it's going to get... Such technicality. Messy. We never got this with Greg, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you can either use a spoon um, or... Just You're just going to go in with your hands now, aren't you? Yeah, I was going to say uh, I'd, I'd be tempted So to... um, these, uh, these mints will make four burgers, but, you know, you, this is great to get the children to do this. They yeah. love getting in the kitchen and mucking about. <laughs> right. They also make meatballs. So if you want, you can make right. them smaller. Yeah. Um, and this recipe, you can either uh, pan fry, mm -hmm. you can grill, you can put them in the air fryer. Really, really. And do you really add easy. anything to bind the meat with? No, nope. you don't need to do no. that. Great. Nothing at all. Just you've got the uh, fish sauce and you've mm -hmm. got the lime juice mm -hmm. and the and zest and seasoning. Um, it. This is ten percent fat lamb mince, right? Um, which which helps to bind it together. Mm. And all you do is you divide it into four. Because mm. I'm making burgers. For, and then you just shape them mm. into patties. Uh, Wonderful. Like so. so there should be four of these. I'll just do them quickly. I think I've got enough time. Um, and to serve with this, so I'm going to... Denise, while you're doing that, yes. can we remind people where they can find the recipe? Yes, of course. The recipe is on the Shazam website. Brilliant. Um, and as I said yesterday, we've got our own website as well, Simply mm -hmm. Beef and Lamb. Simply Beef and Lamb. Brilliant. Yes, lots of halal recipes to choose from. Um, You'll be amazed what you'll find on the website. And we've got a separate yep. um, Ramadan page as well. And so is that linked to the AHDB website? 
Yeah. yeah. Well, Simply Be from Lamb is part of AHDB. Right. It's our consumer website. So all the recipes are on Simply Be from Lamb. And you, you masterminded that, didn't you? Well, we're... Yeah, I, I, most of the recipes, if they don't work, it's my <laughs> fault. Well, the one yesterday worked, <laughs> and this one looks like it's, it's, it's going to be a, a complete winner. So, so we've got four burgers here. It's a great mm. idea to sort of let them chill, cover them and let them chill yeah. so they firm up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Really good, to, to, and then they don't fall apart. So I've got some already prepared, and um, what I've done is I'm going to serve them. I'm going to cook these later, the crew. Um, <laughs> so what I've got here is He's spoiling got, the crew. They're going to get used I've to this got now. Some wholemeal flaps. Um, I didn't use James's flour. <laughs> Just wholemeal uh, flaps. You can use uh, naan bread. You can use pita, but I just thought it's nicer to have some really healthy wholemeal. Baps. and I've just put some salad in here and some uh, freshly uh, mm -hmm. chopped red onion and then what we're going to do is we're just gonna I've got some that I've prepared earlier and they've been resting for a while because uh, also it's good to rest once you've mm. cooked your lamb mm. to rest it they're cooked through oh that looks amazing and then and so how long would you suggest these, we do them in the these take yeah. six to eight minutes on, on each, each side. side yeah but the, the, the pan needs to be really hot okay so six, six minutes, minutes and then six then you flip them over and then you flip them yeah. over yeah and okay. the meat juices should run clear there shouldn't be any any blood mm -hmm. so the meat juices should be clear sure. so james okay. you must be hungry from your journey up from oxfordshire <laughs> and, then, this. and then you've got i'll let you serve yourselves oh there's uh mayonnaise and there's tomato ketchup there's also some um, potato salad because oh, it's all healthy, mm. healthy balanced diet. A little bit of this, a little bit, a bit of that. Of that. <laughs> where, where have I heard that? Let's, Let's eat, eat balance. balance. Potato salad. Oh wow! While I dress my burger. <laughs> right, I'm going to get this these salad on. looks really nice. So you've drizzled a little bit of honey on that. As yeah, well. it's just got some um, spring onions, some cherry tomatoes, mm -hmm. uh, salad leaves, and just a little bit of lime juice. I think I put in there. And the drizzle of uh, James's honey, just right. for that wonderful added sweetness. Mm. The bees are just coming out of their winter <laughs> cluster at the moment. So as well as lambing, we've oh, got wow. the peak beekeeping season is just coming up. Wow! So James, yeah. go on, dig in and let us know what you think. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. Be honest. No, it looks fantastic. This looks really nice. <clears throat> mm. Mm. Wow. Flavor. That is good. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. You can really taste mm. the lime. Mm. Yeah, it's fresh. And, the and you can customise it to make, you know, for your family. Mm. If you mm. want to use a different paste, mm -hmm. um, if you just want just lamb, you can put a bit of mint sauce in, shop bought mm. mint sauce, a bit of curry paste. I'm yeah. just really impressed at how tender the burger actually tastes. Well, it's the secret mm. is resting mm. after it's cooked. It's mm. just to rest it mm. so the muscles relax. Mm -hmm. And then the, the, the meat juices absorb back into the, the mints. Right. Um, that's the secret. Just to rest it for a couple mm -hmm. of minutes. And, um, well, that is really nice. So, would this go, how would this go down at yours? Wow. I need the recipe. That is <laughs> absolutely fantastic. Thank you. So, the Shazan's website will yeah. have the recipes. Yes. As will simplybeefandlamb.co.uk. Brilliant. So, this is, this is amazing. And the... So, other than the honey, did you was it was there other dressing there on this? There wasn't any other dressing. Right. I didn't use any oil at all. Just the lime juice mm. and the honey. Mm. Um, but it's all about you know the products. Of course, you know, we've got really um, good red meat. It's again, it's what we've been saying all week. Isn't it? When you use good quality produce, yes. and part of what you've been talking about today is how we get to getting good quality produce by you know the the example you gave of the apple. Mm. yeah absolutely um, really yeah um like, like in all things it's attention to detail and farming yeah. there's always yeah always something to be focused on definitely well we're coming very close to the end of the show now so denise are you with us tomorrow i am great we stuff for heaters well we really look forward to what we're you're going to make tomorrow <laughs> oh, i might have to come back <laughs> and james thank you so much for everything you've done and coming up here and My allowing pleasure. us to and yeah, inviting us to your farm as well so Thank we you. hope that um, you have a safe journey back. Thank but you. before you go, I hope you'll enjoy the burger <laughs> and that you continue to progress with your wonderful, with your wonderful venture. Thank you.
Thanks, okay, guys, take care of yourselves. We'll be back tomorrow. Take care of yourselves, inshallah. See you then. Allah Hafiz.